Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Hoffman Zimmel. I am the executive director for One Iowa, who's been to the great state of Iowa before. That's amazing. If you have not been to Iowa, I encourage you to come visit us. We're pretty awesome, and I think one of the best, un best kept secrets is Des Moines, so check out Des Moines. This is not a new, probably, topic for many of you, but it is a topic that has been new to Iowa. Iowa is known for politics. We've had the longest serving governor, who is now the current ambassador to China, and we are the first in the nation presidential caucus. So when you think of Iowa, you generally think of politics. But what oftentimes goes unheard of is our legacy of civil rights. We were one of the first states to pass interracial marriage 100 years before the entire country did. We were the, one of the first to modernize our HIV law in the state. We were, one of the, we were the first state to admit a woman to the bar and serve as an attorney in the state. And one thing that you probably all know, hopefully, is that Iowa was third in the country when it came to legalizing marriage equality. So we have an amazing legacy, and one of the reasons why Iowa specifically is chosen, was chosen to be the first in the nation is because of our fairness. And we have an even split of Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. We're not the coast, we're not the south, we're pretty much in the middle and can determine a lot about the person's character. But for the past 30 years, we've had a split House, Senate, or Governor, and up until two years ago, now we have a, the trifecta. The Republicans control everything. So now we have Governor Kim Reynolds, who is a Republican. Our House and Senate have pretty strong splits with Republicans in control. We do have two bright spots right now. Representative Liz Bennett was Iowa's first out LGBTQ woman to serve in the Iowa legislature. And Senator Matt McCoy, who was Iowa's first out elected official to serve in the Iowa legislature. Unfortunately, he's going to be running for Polk County Board of Supervisors, so we are going to be down to one this coming election. We were very concerned two years ago when this happened and heard that there potentially would be a religious exemption bill. So we worked behind the scenes with our progressive coalition partners to block that from being introduced. But that first elected uh, session, we did hear the next year would be a bathroom bill introduced. And so we got pretty worried and started to do some groundwork. One of the things I did personally was reached out to my representative who is in my personal district. I set it up as a personal citizen connecting with my legislator, and I did not know a lot about him. He was a Republican, a younger Republican, but had no prior knowledge about his, his beliefs or anything about him. When I set up the meeting, he requested a 6 a.m. meeting, which was either he wanted to get rid of me or that was really the only time he was able to meet. So I took him up on his offer, and come to find out some of his best friends are gay, he is very supportive of marriage equality, so it looked like he potentially could be an ally in the legislature. But unfortunately, he did not have a lot of power. He was in a small leadership position, but not a lot of power. We did have some additional partners come on board with business leading the way, but also some of our national partners came on board, Equality Federation, MAP, and the Human Rights Campaign. But here's where our story gets a little bit different. Serendipity played a huge role in Iowa last year. Our judiciary chair had an, got an OWI, and not only was he driving while intoxicated, he also had a gun with him, so that added to a layer of complexity, and was removed from his chairmanship on the judiciary, which meant that role was open. So who got to serve but the person who I had met with and had charmed enough to become my friend now? Ultimately, there were two bathroom bills that got introduced, and this person individually killed them right off the bat. They didn't even get introduced. So having that relationship was huge. This is a text message that we and he and I exchanged, and he was great intel on both the House and Senate for us to not only combat the bathroom bill, but also work to kill the religious exemption bill. So we, <laughs> we, we, we were able to celebrate huge successes in Iowa, even facing this trifecta of Republicans in control, but unfortunately we anticipate 
these things happening again, which is why we're continuing that relationship. Not only is this representative, um, who's a Republican, gonna hopefully go to bat for us, but we've engaged him in our work. He's offered a free capital tour, personal tour at our gala that we auctioned off, and he's also spoken to our Leadership Institute on a panel on politics. So continuous with those relationships is really important piece. And I can't stress enough relationships, 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 and a little bit of serendipity.